It's an honor to share communion with you today. I'm working from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me. This is week 24, Freed Forever by the Blood of His Sacrifice. Hebrews 9, 11 through 12 says this, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption for us. As we partake of communion in light of this scripture, let us highlight certain sections of these verses to make our experience with communion more meaningful. Number one, but Christ came. We can thank God that Christ came based on his mind and his attitude. Philippians 2, 6 through 7 says this, he had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. He became human. That's out of the Message Bible. Jesus' sacrifice for us didn't begin at the cross. He sacrificed his status as God and laid aside his divine privileges. He was the seed of the woman who would crush the head of the serpent in Genesis 3.15. He was the fulfillment of God's promise to the wicked one. Number two, but Christ came as the high priest. See, the high priest in the Old Testament went into the most holy place with blood for himself and for the people. He alone could enter the holiest of all. Once he carried out God's instructions, the sins of the people were covered and God could continue to deal with the Israelites. Jesus came as the high priest. He didn't enter into the earthly temple with sacrifices that covered the sins of the people. He went into the holiest of all, God's throne room, with his own blood, and our sins were obliterated. He washed our sins with his own blood, and he made us kings and priests unto God. As believers, we have access to God with confidence. Jesus was the final offering for sin. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Number three, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. Jesus came to fulfill the law of the old covenant and to bridge mankind from the old covenant to the new covenant. See, the word better is associated with Christ and what he did for us. First of all, Hebrews 7, 19 says that the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Jesus, Jesus made it possible for us to draw near to God even though we aren't perfect. We draw near to God because his seat is a mercy seat. And that's the next point. Hebrews 7.22 says that Jesus was made the surety of a better covenant. That means that he is the personal guarantee of the terms of the new covenant secured on the ground of his perfect sacrifice. It goes on to say in Hebrews 8.6, it says that he has obtained an excellent ministry as the mediator of a better covenant established on better promises. As the mediator of the better covenant, he guarantees the terms of the covenant for his people. Hebrews 9.23 says that the Old Testament contained only the patterns of the things in the heavens. The blood of bulls and goats were sacrificed under the law to purge the sins of the people. The heavenly things, however, required better sacrifices. Christ entered not into the holy places made with hands, which are only the types of the true. Christ entered into heaven itself to appear in the presence of God for us. He appeared once to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He was once offered to bear the sins of many. The new covenant is a better covenant because we're born again under the new covenant. He came once for all at the end of the age to put away the power of sin forever by dying for us. We have the nature of God and Christ will appear to us a second time. He will return not to carry any burden of sin or to deal with sin. He will come to bring full salvation to those who eagerly wait for him. Number four, Christ came with his own blood. 
He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. As human beings, we will do everything and anything we can to keep our blood in our veins. The life of the flesh is in the blood, but Jesus let his blood flow out of his veins so that he could enter the most holy place to obtain that eternal redemption for us. The blood never, I said never, loses its power. Jesus ransomed us from captivity to the guilt and power of sin, and the ransom price he paid is good for all of eternity. As we partake of communion today, the cup represents the shedding of Christ's blood, which was valuable enough to purchase man from the taskmaster of sin for all time. As we partake of the bread, we remember that Jesus sacrificed his body to shed his blood, and we can also thank God that he is the guarantee of the new covenant and healing. I said healing is included as a provision of that covenant. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that you came to establish a better covenant with better promises. And a better sacrifice was made, the shedding of the precious blood of Christ, that we might be redeemed for all time. For by one sacrifice you have perfected forever those who are being set apart. So God, we partake of communion today, looking at that little word, better. Everything was made better by your sacrifice, and we are the beneficiaries of that sacrifice. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, let's partake together.